thank you so much for joining today's webinar. Um, right now, we're going to go ahead and go over some checklists, and then later today in about two hours at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Arizona time, we will be going over the inventory. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below on the Zoom bar, or you can also comment on our Facebook Live. So I signed into Restaurant Systems Pro, and the first thing I'm going to do is under daily paperwork, I'm going to go to checklist dashboard. And give me one second, actually. Let me go into the demo system. So this is what the checklist dashboard looks like. If you have any existing checklists in the system, you're going to be able to see them from this window. Please note all of the checklists that you see, so you can see for right now in our demo system, we have about 16 checklists. But all of these checklists are the ones that reoccur for this current day. So one of the biggest things with checklists is how you filter for them and search for them. So for example, there's two different types of checklists. One is going to be a checklist that's every single day, for example. So let's just say that you have a Tuesday operational checklist. That would be a checklist that typically reoccurs every single uh, Tuesday or every single day. You may also have a cleaning checklist, for example, that with the cleaning checklist, it only generates one day a week every month, I'm sorry, one day a month. Um, and with that one, what you're going to have to do to filter if you cannot find it is up on the very top it automatically generates to the date range. Because today is Tuesday, that is why you see the Tuesday operational one. But if you had one for, let's, let's just say, a Monday operational checklist or cleaning checklist that only generates once a month, you have to change the date range first, hit search, and then from there, you should be able to see the checklist that you're trying to find specifically. So now you can see once I change the number of pages, you can see I can view my Monday operational null checklist, and then from there, I can adjust it. So that's the first thing with checklists is how you filter for them or why you may not be able to see the checklist once you sign in. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're not able to see the checklist and it is for that current day that you're on, it's due to the repetition time or the reoccurrence time. So let's just say, for example, I'm going to click on this Tuesday operational checklist, and then from there, there's going to be an edit icon under the reoccurrence. I'm going to click on that edit icon, looks like a pencil, and then from there, you can see that I have my repetition type as days of the week, and it only generates on Tuesday at 8 a.m. till 7 p.m. That means if I try to go in my checklist dashboard in Restaurant Systems Pro and try to look at this checklist at 7 a.m., it's not going to generate until that 8 a.m. checklist start time uh, generates. Now, please note, although the deadline is marked at 7 p.m., you still will be able to answer the checklist before the dispatch time. Um, it will just let your employees know that they are late for the day. And again, make sure you guys have, if you guys have any questions that you guys ask on chat. All right. So there's a couple other things I want to show you before we dive into the actual checklist itself. Again, up on the very top, we have the start and end time. And we have this drop down box that says checklist type. If I click on the drop down box, I have filter for all recurring templates or one time templates, which is what we just spoke, spoke about earlier. I also have a text box to search for my template name right over here. And then below the start date, there's an active and inactive folder. So the inactive folder, if there's any checklists that have been permanently deleted, that have been deleted, they aren't permanently deleted, they will always be in the inactive folder. And then from there, if you want to reactivate it, you would select it, scroll down, and then click on active. going to ask you, are you sure you want to activate this checklist? Go ahead and click yes. And then from there, it will activate that checklist for you and generate under the active columns. Couple other columns. So on the very bottom, we have a plus sign to add a new checklist. 
we have an edit icon. So what that's for is if you're on a tablet, for example, you can't double click on a tablet. So you have to select the checklist one time. So it's highlighted blue and click on the edit icon. We have the clone icon. So let's just say that you have a checklist, one specific checklist for your opening manager. And you typically always have two opening managers, but you want them to be able to answer their own separate checklist completely. Then I would just clone the checklist and then I would assign it to both of those specific managers, for example. We have the inactive checklist. So if I want to make a checklist inactive, again, I just click on it one time. So it's highlighted blue and then click on the inactive folder. If you have multiple restaurants, you can copy over checklists from one restaurant to the other by clicking on it one time so it's highlighted blue and then clicking on copy. <clears throat> we have also have a notification icon. I'm going to select this checklist one time so it's highlighted blue and then click on notification option. And then from there, it will ask you if you want to receive this notification. Uh, for text messages. If yes, make sure that you select the yes icon. Emails, web, or on Restaurant Assistance Pro Smart Connect app. Also, if everyone's not aware of this, we have two different types of apps in our system. They look like this. Oops, long thing. A random photo. Sorry about that, guys. So one is going to be a green checklist or a green app, and the other one is going to be a blue app. The Smart Connect app is the app that you're going to be using for your checklist. All of our apps are free, so just a heads up about that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And something else I wanted to mention before we get out of that notification page. Under Labor Systems, I'm going to go to Employees. And open up the Employee section. From the employee section, I'm going to search for my name, for example, or anyone's name. And when you search for yourself or whoever, you would double click on them. And then from there, you just want to make sure that they have an email address set up in the system, as well as under cell phone, it is a required. So there is going to be an asterisk next to that column. But you want to make sure that there's no special characters within the cell phone number. And then lastly, under text allowed, there's a drop down box right over here. You want to make sure you click on this drop down box and select true and then save that so your manager or your employee will be able to receive text messages as well as emails um, or whatever they'd like for their checklist notifications. So again, you have to make sure under the labor systems under employees that that section is good to go and that your employee has the email has a cell phone number without any special characters, and then the drop-down box for text message is allowed. Also, another great tip for you is under labor systems, under employees, there's going to be a column. It's the third one to the right that says text allowed. And if you see false, that means that these specific employees are not able to receive text messages about their schedule or about their checklist. So going back to Restaurant Systems Pro, I'm going to go back to this checklist page. And there's one more thing I need to show you on the very bottom. And we're actually going to skip on that until we're done adding a checklist ourselves. So what I'm going to show you now is how to actually add a checklist into Restaurant Systems Pro. I'm going to click on the plus sign or the add icon on the bottom grid. And then from here, it's going to ask me for my template name. So let's just say that this is going to be a cleaning checklist. And you can name it whatever you'd like, and you can always go back and change the name of the actual checklist. From here, I'm going to click on Save. And anyone that's on live right now, please let me know if I'm going too fast, and I will slow down. And when you click Save, this is a page that generates for you to be able to create a checklist. So you can create a checklist on any topic that you'd like and just ask us. We may already have a checklist already existing in the system that we can copy over to your restaurant. So up in the very top, you can see I named it template name as cleaning checklist. And it's going to ask you, do you want this checklist to repeat? 
If you do, you're going to go ahead and click on this icon and select yes. Once you've selected yes, you're going to click on edit reoccurrence. So this is one of the most important parts of your checklist, and this is assigning what day um, or time that this will generate at. All right, so the first section is going to be a drop-down box for repetition type. I'm going to click on the drop-down box, and depending on this specific checklist, you're going to select days of the week or days of the month. For this one, I'd like them to start cleaning uh, or making sure everything is clean and sanitized on a daily basis. So I'm going to go ahead and select days of the week. From there, and now generates with a drop-down box that says uh, days of the week, so I can specify exactly which day. If I want this to only generate on, let's say, Monday, I can click on it and then continue clicking on the days that I want this to generate on. For this specific checklist, again, I want it to generate on all days of the week, so I'm going to go ahead and select all. From there, the checklist start time and the deadline. So let's say, for example, that the first um, person that comes in that's going to be cleaning for the day is going to be my support crew, and they normally come in at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So with that, I always like to be a little, uh, give them a little extra room. So if they started at 9, I'm going to go ahead and click on this calendar or this uh, time frame box, and then I'm going to actually select a little bit earlier than 9. I'm going to select 8.45, and that way if they do happen to come in a little bit early, um, for whatever reason, that they can still see the checklist 15 minutes or, you know, 30 minutes in advance before, their actual, before they actually were supposed to work. Now, there's going to be a deadline. So, again, the deadline, even if I go past my deadline and did not answer my checklist, I can still go in here and answer my checklist um, after the fact. Now, I cannot answer it after my deadline, though. So whatever time at the end of the night that you receive that manager log email will be your dispatch time. And that means that no one can answer the manager log, for example, or any uh, checklist for the previous day that just ended. All right. So what I'm going to do for my deadline is going to be my close time. So I'm going to go ahead and select. 10.30, we typically close at 10, and then the support staff is, should be done with this task by 10.30. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and now it will only generate at 8.45 till 9 p.m. or 10.30 p.m. every single day of the week. All right, and after you click save, you don't have to click save on this icon again. This icon is specifically for if you change the template name, you can go ahead and save it after the fact. All right, the next section is going to be notification info. Your notification info is going to be who you're going to have manager-wise uh, to be able to receive notifications if this checklist has been answered, for example, or if it was not answered for that day, incomplete, whatever it may be. So today I'm going to go ahead and select Katrina Von Moose. And I'm also going to click on it one more time, and then I'm going to go, going to go ahead and select myself, because I want to be able to uh, receive notifications when my employees are not answering their checklist. All right. You also have the option to notify the manager of the selected position. So for example, I know that Myself, I've already selected myself down here, but I also know that I am uh, signed under the support position. If you want whoever's the manager on duty to receive the notifications instead of a specific person, you can select this text checkbox. And then from there, I will notify whatever manager is on duty that day. Again, for today's example, I'm going to select specific managers that I want to receive this on a daily basis. So even if I'm not working or Katrina's not working that shift that day or at all that day, we will still be notified. <clears throat> also, you have the option to notify assignee one time is expired or when the employee after they've created a new checklist template. I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep these as yes. I want to be notified about everything on the checklist. And give me one second. Let me just make sure we don't have any comments on live. All right. Now, the next section that we're going to do is going to be list item questions on templates. So your list item templates on list 
item questions on template. That's going to be your actual checklist itself that all the answers in question. I apologize if you hear some lawn mowing in the background. I am working from home today. So again, I apologize um, if you're not able to hear me as clearly. So what we're going to do to add some cleaning checklist questions is clicking on the add icon on the bottom grid. From here, it gives us a couple options. Give me one second. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my example list of questions. All right. So the first question it's going to ask is the actual question itself, which is you're going to type right over here, the, the first text box rather. So I'm going to go ahead and give me one second. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste my checklist question right over here or type it out. And then under item type, I'm going to click on this drop down box and it gives me a bunch of options. So from here, it's going to ask me if I want to go ahead and select check mark for this question, yes or no, employee drop down box, a multiple choice question, a free response, short entry, um, I can upload a photo, I have a measurement box, a rating box, one through five, one through 10, I also have a date and a time box, a date and time box as well as reading instructions and section only. I also wanna go back to the measurement, measurement one. Although this question does not pertain to the measurement, I did wanna mention something about that one. So if let's just say that I have a question is on my walk-in cooler and if it's in the same range, temperature range that it needs to be, whatever range that you put in there, if your answer is out of the range, it will automatically notify your manager, letting them know that it's the walking cooler is out of the temperature range. They need, it needs to be checked as soon as possible. Uh, multiple media, multimedia, this photo one. So the cool thing about this one is if they're doing the checklist on an iPad, for example, or on a tablet, they have to take the photo then and there. It does not allow them to go back to their actual camera roll. All right, required. You would go ahead and select yes or no if you'd like this to be required, and then completed points. I'll go over that in a second. So for this specific question, dust blinds, windows, and lock ledges, I'm going to go ahead and click on the drop-down box. And for this one, I'd like to select yes or no. So they have to select yes or no if that was completed or not. I'm going to go ahead and make this a required field. And then the number of completed points. So that's going to be basically you could create a game out of checklists. For example, if you have 10 questions on your checklist and then each question is one point each, and then someone answers all of the questions accurately or completed the checklist accurately. Um, at the end of the week, for example, you can make this a game and whoever has the most amount of points at the end of the week, you give them a free meal or whatever you'd like. So that's completed points. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And then you would continue clicking on the plus sign on the bottom grid under list item questions on template and continue adding your questions. So the next question I'll add is a spot clean the cabinet front. You can go ahead and do whatever you'd like for the item type. So I'm going to have them do a short entry. Again, select if it's required or not. So I'm going to go ahead and select yes. And then the number of completed points. And it's completely up to you the number of completed points or if you want to go ahead and make a game out of this or not. If you don't plan on doing anything like that and making a game out of this, you can always leave that completed points as blank. All right, any questions so far on live? And then let me make sure on Facebook that there's no other questions. All right, no questions so far. So once you're done adding your list of questions, you're going to scroll down and there's one more thing, or a couple other things that you're going to have to do to this specific checklist. The next thing is assigned to. 
Now there's two different ways to assign to. One of the ways to assign to is going to be assigning it to a specific position, specific station, or a specific uh, department, whether that be front of the house or back of the house. The other way is to share to a specific employee. So like I said earlier, if you have two managers that always work the AM shift, and you want both of those specific managers to answer their own checklist, then for that example, I would go ahead and share to employee. Now for this specific checklist that we're creating right now, it's the support, I'm gonna actually name it support, cleaning checklist. That means that this is going to be for a specific position. So for this example, under assign to, I'm gonna select the drop-down box, and it's gonna give me the option to assign to position or to a station or a meal period. Uh, for this one, I would like to go ahead and select a position, and then the schedule date. So today, once I've completed the checklist, it's going to be the 17th, today's the 17th. That means that I'm gonna select the schedule date as the 17th. And then tomorrow, this will reoccur, and then the schedule date will automatically uh, change for you, so you don't have to worry about reassigning it every single day. The next, the next drop-down box is going to be department. So you can select a specific department. For this example, again, I'm gonna select TRE support. And then my position drop-down box, I would select the position, scroll down until you find it, click on the position one time, and then click on load user schedule. You can see that Betty Boop is the only support that's working today, and she's actually working 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. So although I put my repetition time on the very top, my reoccurring time, at 8.45 a.m. till 10.30 p.m., her shift is three to 10, and so she'll have enough time during her shift to be able to get all of my questions answered and completed. All right. Um, another couple of examples I wanted to give you is if I were to select station, and then from there, there's a drop down box, I can select if I want a specific station. So although I'm working the support position, I may be assigned as a busser, as a runner, or as an expo that day. And so I can select basically a position in a, a station within the position. Also, I have the option for a meal period. So the meal period is going to be AM shift, PM shift, and open, for example. Um, I'm actually going to get out of this screen real quick, and I'm gonna open up the schedule for you so I can show you the differences. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this drop-down box and select my position that I wanna view. But I wanted to show you guys a couple things. And because Betty Boop was the person to generate, I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on her to show you. So I'm gonna go back to the checklist real quick. And it gave me the option for my meal period. So no matter what, we've entered their master schedule or their employee availability, whatever you wanna call it, under labor systems, under employee availability. So if they gave, if you selected and, uh, and completed this employee availability, that's what the meal periods are coming from. So if I actually go to an upcoming week, I'll be able to see their actual schedule or should be, let me double check. So you can see if I were to select my checklist as meal period, as my AM, Everyone that's under assigned to this specific position that says AM on Monday, for example, will be able to receive that specific checklist. Now for my stations, I'm going to go back to my schedule one moment. And for this specific uh, position, I don't have any stations, but let me go to the line test because I know that they do. So I'm going to double click on employee. And you can see that Manuel, he is assigned to the station Sauté. And his base option is actually closed for these specific days. All right. So that's what the station would be. It's a position, or it's a station within a position. And then lastly, I have, let's see. Actually, those are both of the options besides the actual schedule itself. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this back to my position as support. That way, the support will be able to receive this checklist at the end of the night. 
Now, if I want to share to a specific employee instead of assigned to a specific position, meal period, or a station, down the very bottom, I have share to employees. And from there, I'm going to click on the plus sign or the add icon in the bottom grid. And it gives me add employee uh, box. So from here, if I wanted a specific employee, let's just say Addison Bell, to receive this checklist on a daily basis, and she will, no matter if she's working that shift or not, I can go ahead and select her, or I can filter up, up, up here and search for the person, add. All right. And then that way, um, Addison Bell, for this example, will receive it every single day, no matter what. So I'm going to take that out, and the last thing I need to do for this specific checklist is save. So once I save this, uh, Betty Boop, who's working the support position today, will be able to receive to see her checklist and receive it and answer it on her checklist app or on a tablet, whatever it may be. She can also still go into the system and answer these uh, these questions on a computer. That's up to you. Once I'm done saving, I'm going to click on the back arrow. There's two back arrows, one's on the very bottom and one's on the very top. It does not matter as long as it redirects you to this main page. So it's taking me back to this main page, and there's a couple other things that I want to show you. So under the support cleaning checklist, I'm going to go ahead and click on it one time so it's highlighted blue. And because I made this a game and I made sure that I put, if I double click on it, I put a completed number of points right down here. The last thing I need to do if I've created this and made it a game for my checklist, then you click on it one time and then click on achievement settings. From here, it redirects me to this box. So you'll see for this example, I have three different options and it really depends on how many points you put per checklist. So I can see my gold status, that's my heart highest ranking, is going to have zero users as of now, and they've needed at least 201 through 500 points in order to hit that status level. I have a bronze level, and with this bronze level, you can see right next to it, it says one user. I can click on this arrow icon to view the one user, so you can see they need to hit at least 101 through 200 uh, for this specific range to be able to hit that level. The last one is copper level. And again, you could create whatever uh, different levels that you want. If you don't want it to be called gold, you can call it silver, whatever it may be. But we have 295 users and they have to have at least zero to 100 questions in order to hit that level. So that's where they'll start at. And then the more they'll, that they'll do this checklist, they can go ahead and, you know, move up, bump up to the gold or the bronze level. Now to create this, all you need to do is click on the plus sign on the bottom grid. And then from there, it's going to ask you rank name. So because there's already a gold and we've already had this one completed, I'm just going to go ahead and call it, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and call it gold all star. So that's the ultimate level. Now the minimum point through the maximum amount of points. So you can see my gold level is already 201 through 500. So that means I'm just going to do about 501 for the minimum max, uh, minimum points. And for the maximum, I want to do 600. Once I save that, it generates on the very top, and then you'll be able to see if there's any users that were, are within that achievement level or that badge level, you'll be able to see their name right over here or you'll be able to see you know, how many users are within that actual achievement setting. Does anyone have any questions on the actual achievement setting? Give me one second. Let me just, again, make sure on chat there's no questions. All right. Now, once I'm done, there's no other save icon. I'm going to hit the back arrow. All right. 
So that's the actual checklist itself. Now, if I was assigned to this specific checklist, um, in a, if I'm on a browser, all I have to do is select the checklist one time so it's highlighted blue, and then click on redirect to checklist assigned to me. When I click on that, because this checklist is not assigned to me, it's not allowing me to actually answer it. But when I click on my checklist one time and then click on the icon, it should redirect you to be able to answer your checklist on the actual browser itself. Give me one second. I'm actually going to go ahead and sign myself to this specific checklist. All right. Again, does anyone have any questions or concerns? So give me one second. I'm going to go ahead and join my Zoom uh, meeting link on my actual phone, and then I'm going to show you how to actually answer this checklist on your phone. <laughs> 